Welcome to an all Sprint Report edition of Inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee, and let's get into it. Following our look at new derelict concepts a couple weeks ago, members of the environment team have begun the process of building the individual pieces that can be used to bring them to life, starting with the big mammer jammer itself, the Reclaimer. Now this is sort of like a reverse white box phase, where environment artists take the completed work of ship artists and then begin to break it down, stripping it of all the extraneous parts and then bending and twisting the superstructure in ways appropriate for a wreck that's one, two, or perhaps even 10 years old. What you're seeing here is the beginnings of a, a derelict zoo, as it were, creating the buffet of basic forms that designers and other artists will be able to pull from to continue their specific work building out the various points of interest players can explore on the planets and moons of Stanton, Pyro, and beyond. It's early days, and this simple Reclaimer Derelict Zoo will continue to evolve over the coming weeks, in addition to many of the others seen in previous concept arts ahead of their systemic implementation into the Persistent Universe proper. The team is also exploring early advanced traversal opportunities for some of the outlaw space stations currently being built for the Pyro system. If you remember the most recent CitizenCon demo, advanced traversal are ways to get around or through an environment beyond the critical path most people usually stick to. Now, by following a variety of indicators still being developed, including simple things like tracing the path of an unusual cable or scratch marks on the floor, the players can discover these advanced traversal paths designed to lead not just to interesting tactical opportunities, but special loot and content rewards for those who spend a little extra time exploring. As for everything else you're seeing here, this is still very much a work in progress, with only the earliest of lighting, texture, and prop passes being complete. But it's a neat look at how these stations are pushing not just into new dynamics visually, but a universe of possibility for additional exploration as well. And like with the outposts you saw at CitizenCon, they won't be assembled the same way each and every time. So you can never be too certain what's around any corner. Members of the environment team also took a sprint to explore something on our backlog, namely the addition of small and medium-sized hangars to the ring structure of some space stations. It's a small touch, but these small touches, they add up to make for a more dynamic landing and takeoff experience as players travel across the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. Let's switch gears here. From bounty hunting to mining, from emergency response to racing to espionage and security, as the reputation system continues to grow and expand within Star Citizen, so too must the interface that represents it. To that end, Explorations are underway mapping out the representative icons for some of the various mission-type career paths currently in development for the Persistent Universe. Now, in a recent sprint, icons for several more reputation paths were proposed, including kidnapping, hauling, smuggling, and theft. Now, these aren't the full array of possible reputation paths, just a few that the UI team is currently making icons for, but we'll be covering more about this massive expansion of the reputation system and the various mission types and activities that go along with it as development continues. Yes, I can already tell that some of you are a little too excited to build your reputation in kidnapping. And it bothers me. Meanwhile, the lighting team recently completed a sanity pass on the RSI Mantis cockpit. Now, these sanity passes are essential in ensuring the latest tech and process improvements reach assets that were built prior to their implementation, as well as keep some of the older stuff just looking as good as the newer. Now, this happens on everything, and the Mantis here is just the most recent example of updates that don't just make the visual appearance better than before, but are also more performative and less resource intensive. That's our version of tastes great, less filling. They can also serve as terrific training opportunities to pass knowledge from older employees onto our newer hires as the company continues to grow. And speaking of growth, let's take a quick jaunt over to Orizon and look at some new executive offices being developed.
Now these structures would be placed out on some of the raised landing platforms and provide a small, self-contained working area for Orison's bureaucracy, including an elevator down into the inner depths of platforms beneath. Of course, as for what adventures players may one day find in such an area, I'm not telling. Mostly because I don't know yet. I missed a meeting. Let's move on to some ship updates with this look at the continuing final art phase of the Vulture from Drake Interplanetary, where you can see all sorts of the smaller details you'd expect to see while unifying some of the scale reads where some items in the back half seem to feel a little more chunky compared to those in the front. It's pretty much just tightening things up and finishing them off now ahead of Salvage's intended release later this year. But before that happens, we've got the Misk Hull A barreling towards completion at the end of this quarter, where its final art pass continues adding all the various decals and decorations you might expect. But disclaimer here, those aren't the correct cargo boxes you're seeing here. The ship didn't just massively increase in size. It's just an artist having a little fun. They're also adding the trademark Misk turret underneath the cockpit and continuing to refine the expanding and contracting cargo grid for all your shipping needs. Now we'll be talking more about the Hull A later this quarter before its intended release in Alpha 317. Of course, in Merchantman news, the team continues white box phase, working through the entirety of the ship's interior in their efforts to fully map it out before going into gray box. You can see some of the main bridge here with the pilot seats up front and the staircase to one of the primary turret rooms above. In white box phase, it's simply about making certain every space has a purpose, has the room for players to achieve that purpose, and to do so with the signature organic shapes that have come to identify the Banu thus far. Moving down to engineering, work continues making certain everything is to metric. Now, last time we showed it, the stairs here were getting just a little too pinched, so they've opened up the area a bit, trying to make the whole room feel nice and grand within the confines of the current exterior. And then in the habitation area, you can see the beginnings of a Banu shrine that we'll explore more of in the future. And then here we have the interior turret area we mentioned before which is shaping up to be quite different from any other turret you've experienced before, evoking that same sense of scale found throughout other areas of the ship. It's a massive gun, and this massive space that houses it is actually open to the decks below it, which should make for quite the view before the turret forms down around you and sucks you up into it, raises above the exterior of the ship, and then lets you pew pew to your heart's content. Yeah, merchantmen people, this one's going to be worth the wait. And finally, before we let you go, we started this week with derelicts and a mention of those colonialism outposts, so let's combine the two and look at an initiative the teams undertook to explore outposts of days gone past with these concepts that you can see here. Now, one of the many projects the team at Turbulent is working on are the systemic tools that will one day bring these to life across the pyro system. But as with all concepts, artists must first explore the ideas further and set the goals for those systems to build towards. And just like the Reclaimer derelicts from before, work has also begun creating the derelict outpost zoo that will one day serve as the basis for hand-placed points of interest first, then the systemic implementation still currently in development. Now, whether it's brand new or 100 years old, each location is a new opportunity for story and gameplay to be found throughout the upcoming Pyro system. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the process of making new things old and then new again is well underway with the Reclaimer and Outpost derelicts. That advanced traversal means additional opportunities for loot and storytelling in the Outlaw space stations that the Banu Merchantman continues to make its impressive journey through White Box, and that the reputation system is on the cusp of expanding into a wide variety of legal and not-so-legal activities. Now, don't forget that Xenothreat is still underway, and Coromore is almost upon us with slick, iridescent paints, and 
hopefully no more Valentine's card contests that I, uh, I have to explain to my mother. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>